You know, get him to go in the hive. Mm -hmm. Okay, get some of that smoke in there. Okay. And you want to just wait a minute, okay? Because okay. what's going to happen is the bees are going to, uh, they're going to smell that smoke and they're going to start eating honey. Okay. Hi, welcome to Russian River Bees, a management of nooks. Well, management of nooks, it's a good conversation, I think, and we all should be talking about this, especially these times where bees are having an issue and the drought is here in Northern California. So what are nucleus nooks? I call them nucleus nooks, but really they're, what is a nucleus hive? There's three purposes of managing nooks. Either you're going to sell these um, or begin a new hive for yourself or new or nook production. So what we have there, we have a mated virgin queen in production. So during the summer months, we increase our production and hold several queens and requeening is an emergency and overwintering. Let me get back to it. Let's read it. Use to manage summer increase, hold several queens for requeening in an emergency and over and overwintering. Well, what they mean here is that when you have a uh, apiary, you might, you're probably going to have over seven hives, uh, which is probably ten, and you're going to need to requeen your boxes. Now, some of these hives will last, well, queens will last five years, four years, and production can stop and get slow over the years. So you're going to need to requeen and that's what you have to do here. That's how you manage uh, your bees. But you also have to manage nooks. And they're smaller. Uh, and they take a little more time. Now we sell nooks individually. Uh, it's like a new hive. Well, it is a new hive. With a new queen. So let's talk about nook production. One way to produce income from bees is to sell nooks. And those waiting to start new hives, which we just said in the last slide, it's really short-term management because there's less frames there, less bees and a queen. And if you notice here on the slide, nooks are sold four or five frame starter hives in a small box or a small container. And nooks have a number of advantage over packaged bees. They also offer a few disadvantages. Well, they can get heated up quicker. Uh, you have to feed them more. And uh, they can be robbed faster. Other bees can go in there and rob them quicker. Uh, and you have to manage them a little faster. But a good nook. Hi, we'll have three frames of brood in all, and, and sorry, brood in all stages of development. A good laying queen and some honey and pollen. Needs to be inside that nook. Well, let's talk about these nooks. A nook can be made up from a strong hive. Any hive which is strong enough to split can be used to make up one or two nooks. Well, I just split it uh, a hive. It was a big hive. It's growing to be more bigger. We're in July of uh, 2022. And I can still split another hive, but I don't have queens, so I did a walkaway split. That's one way of doing it or having queens ready to go uh, on standby. You need three frames of brood and enough bees to cover the brood, plus extra bees and a laying queen, and add a frame of honey and pollen and another frame of bees. If making up if I frame the, I don't know the if, but making up, okay, you got that, right? So we're going to make some nooks out of one hive, make two nooks out of one hive, have two queens ready, or do a walkaway split. You can build nooks, nook boxes to transport these bees in their new hives. Have the customer provide their own equipment. So if you guys want to sell your own stuff, you know, either you can, uh, they can bring their own equipment, you can tell them what to bring, and you can put those frames and bees and a queen in there, be careful, or you can make up boxes yourself, 
and sell them to include it in the purchase of the nook. Now, the price really depends on the condition of the frames, if they're new, they're old, is the comb old, it's just new comb, uh, is it been treated, is it not treated? Some people don't want to treat it, treat it uh, frames, treat it at all, what they be used to be raw, what I mean they want them to be natural, they don't want anything to be given to them, it's going to survive off of nature. You have a new queen or an old queen in frame exchanges and nook box shoes, what is this, and prevailing charges of nooks, okay. Let's see what this, so let's read it. The price charge depends upon the condition of the frames. The number of frames, the new queen, the old queen, is it an old queen or, or you're doing a frame exchange, new box, use, use, and prevailing charges for nooks in the area. So whatever the going price is in your area, that's what you can sell them for. Or you can use advertising, you can do a deposit, you want to give them a deposit for these bees, you can leave, they can leave a deposit. Now this is very important, all nooks sold should be inspected by your state inspection service prior to sale. Depends what state you're in, they should be inspected anyway when you get these, or before you get them, make sure they're healthy. And now we'll take you through that stage when we start selling nooks in about two years from now. We just want to let you know, some states do not allow bees to be imported into their states on comb, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that, on comb or comb, comp, <laughs> sorry, check out all the laws governing the sale of bees and the comb, the comp in your state, the comp in your state, I think it's comb, comb, oh, let's move on, you got that, so you got it deal with the state regulations. In a lot of different states, they're really strict on this stuff. They need to. You don't want to bring in any diseases. Now, some states do not allow bees to be imported into their states on comb. Why? AFB is easily spread on the comb, on the comb, in nooks or hives of bees. So they can, you know, be on the bee uh, or spreading a virus and so on, but this is more AFB, so this is something to do with the brood. It is still a major B disease in the U.S. Would you want to be responsible for spreading this disease into someone else's beekeeping operation? I don't think you do, and I don't. So be careful. Alright, it says here, used to mate virgin queens in queen production. Well, queen production is really a good topic. They're not easy to do. It, it takes the art of beekeeping to be able to do this. So it's going to take some time and effort, but it can happen. If you are raising queens, each new queen will require a nook or a separate section within a multi-nook. Multi-nooks are two nooks with a bottom with two separate with a board or two separate small nook wood making ones. They have them, see that one right there? It has, it's wood. That's like a, I think that's a nook. It looks like a f eight frame, but I think that's small. Well, there you go. So, and you need to have that. You know, you have them different sizes, but most, there's a standard size. But then you have the small ones for queens. They have real small ones. You can look online. There's various sizes, just like I told you. And uh, four frames, see, those are four frames. So, and they have the middle, in the middle there, you see the white in the middle, like the, they're two and two, so there's two there's two queens in that box. And they're separate from the uh, separator right there. You can build those also. Queen production. So on the queen production side, which you will grow and get to that stage. But first, you get some nooks for me, and you start your nook farm. But you might want to have some money, so you can do both. But you know, that's how it goes. You buy the nooks, you build the hive next year, you get it to develop, and so on. Now, management of small size nooks requires more intense, intensive attention than large ones, than large nooks. We just explained that to you. You're going to have to really pay attention because of the weather. It depends where you're at. you got microclimates. You have the virus. You need to check the virus load, the virus load on those and see where you're at. Uh, you know, pest management. You, know, you need to know the threshold on the, uh, the varroa mite. You need to know the count. Um, 
these things that you need to know. Larger, larger nooks such as a nook designed to hold standard size full frame, deep frame, which are nine frames, uh, ten frames. I think there's nine frames, right? Just nine, then you got the eight. I'm still learning too. Uh, don't forget, I'm a new commercial geeker, but I'm not getting to be new anymore. I'm learning as I go. But I do a lot of these things already, except the big queen, queen production. That's going to take time. So pay attention, everybody, to your nooks when you start, when you get them, or when you start producing them. Managing nooks for increased overwintering, overwintering, overwintering. Sorry, queen replacement. I would recommend that beekeepers maintain several nook hives during the bee season. Absolutely. Like I told you, emergencies can happen. Queen dies. You, maybe you roll the queen and then she's dead in the hive. Then you got to replace, replace that queen, especially when you're in production time. If you're a honey producer, have on hand a ready queen replacement. Any queen less or failing a failing queen hive. So, uh, you understand, right? So, you, you, when you have a failing, a failing queen, you want to replace it with a good queen. They can be used to make an increase or to add bee population to hives during the nectar flow, which, is, which I just mentioned. Five frame nooks hives can explode in a population growth in a very short period of time, which is very true. It, it can, and it happens really quick. If you don't get there quick enough, let's say you, you, maybe a month or a month, maybe two months, and they'll just swarm on you. They could be, it could be used to make summer increase, as it, as described in this gentleman's book. Have on hand ready a queen replacement for any queenless or failing queen hive. So here it is. A queen can lay 2,000 plus eggs per day. In 10 days, this can amount to 20,000 honeybees. In 20 days, this can amount to 40,000 honeybees. Remember the old edge, edge honeybees make honey oh, old edge I guess it's edge it's age age it's aged. that's a little late out here what time is it I think it's like 9 o'clock at night that's fine beekeepers work long hours they can be used to make a summer increase so adapting to climate conditions in the north wherever you are in the north I'm in the north it is true that the increase are made often in early April but not with northern raised queens. The person wanting to make in, to make an increase in April or early May have no choice but to buy queens rather than raise their own. Well, that depends on if you already have them. If you have them, you know, you might have a lot of bees, you might be a big producer, and you have a lot of nooks, you have a lot of queens and, and hives, and you're able to do that, you know, able to make things happen. However, what would, hap what would happen if you could make summer increases and hold them over the winter? Well, I just told you, you'd make more money. Using your overwintered nooks to make strong new hives in the spring for good tasty honey. Using your overwintered nooks to make strong new hives in the spring. It's possible, but it's going to take some experience, some mentoring and uh, you know, a couple of years on your maybe three years two years on your belt like me uh, and maybe you'll be able to overwinter them okay uh, requirements is plenty of food and stores uh, nooks feed in late summer treat for disease good healthy queen Good healthy bee stock. You want to get a good well, you gotta find the right folks for that. Uh, did I say find the right folks? Uh, yes, that's right. Russian River Bees here in Northern California. Look us up online. And some sort of protection. Beekeepers are I mean beekeepers use various methods.
to overwinter nooks. That's true. Uh, some people in the winter, well, in the east, they wrap their hives. If you've never been a beekeeper, never had honey, I mean, never had uh, hives before, in the wintertime, they wrap up these nooks, they close up the entrance a little bit, they leave little holes, they have the little hole on both sides, and they keep the hive from, you know, getting too cold because of the winters. It, you know, they'll keep it up to, what, 80 degrees, maybe 75, I don't know, depends where you are in the USA. Uh, so some pe people use electric blankets, and, you know, electric heaters. There's all kinds of ways people are doing things these days because of technology. But the, the basic way, they wrap them up with insulation, your regular insulation like uh, fiberglass glass or you know, um, foam boards. You can get them cut. Uh, you can buy them. They're thick, right? Uh, and you just put them around the hive and uh, cut them to that size and, and then wrap a belt you know, and uh, wrap the top. And let the bees come in and out because they have to, you know, they have to go to the, they go to, they do go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, they don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? They go out, so they have to come in and out. They do, they do work in the winter. They do go out and get, uh, they look for honey. I mean, they look for nectar. Sorry, look for pollen. They look for stuff, as you know. And uh, it's it's not easy, but it's it's being done all the time. You just got to get someone to help you. Uh, in California, you don't have to. You just pretty much California. You, they, they're still doing brood. They're still uh, laying. The queen's still laying a little bit. Uh, not as much as they do in, in the in early spring and, and as the weather moves and gets better. Uh, but we have more brood in the winter than most people. Some people are broodless in the winter. They just have bees. They're feeding them honey, I hope. And they're waiting. Uh, and they last the longest. And, uh, and they're able to... Uh, you know, go your apiary, or well, where have you. Okay, so we're just talking about, right, the various methods to overwinter nooks. Some nooks are placed above strong hives, which it means very strong, have a lot of heat. Uh, some are warmer than others. The heat from the hive below, see, helps the smaller unit above. Where you see the picture there, and that's what they do. And then you get the little holes, they come in and out. Uh, and they're all stacked together, which makes them combine a lot of heat, so it's good to bring them all together in the wintertime. Some nooks are placed in uh, shelters, as you see in front of you, and uh, that's what they do. I mean, there's some guys out like in Canada, there's some beekeepers you see online, the Canadian beekeeper, and they have like little warehouses where they run air control systems. And that's what they do. They run the air control systems, and they keep a certain temperature. You know, bees die, right? As you know, they sweep them up, they check them, and they're like at a good temperature. Outside is probably below zero, I, I, you know, who knows? Uh, and then they prep, uh, they feed them. They already fed them, you know, they probably prepped them before they put them in there. Forklifts, uh, electric bill, right? I'm just kidding. Um, and then they have the honey production room. Uh, these are bigger places, bigger farms. And do these kind of things. So that's it with nooks, everyone. Uh, it's about uh, nooks, uh, buying nooks, or you selling them, or buying them for me, or maybe in your neck of the woods. Uh, but this presentation was really about nooks, as you know. You know, it's about growing more bees, or you know, you might want to get in the honey business. And uh, you know, it takes a lot of bees to make honey, so you can imagine the work you have to do and. I'm doing some of that, but not on the big scale. I'm going to be selling these so in the future uh, and helping people in, in, in my local area. So thank you for watching here at, at uh, People Power Farm and Russian River Bees in Northern California. You make it a, a great...